Hey guys, I'm E, and welcome to part two of my video series about making banger basketball videos for Instagram. In part one, professional basketball videographer extraordinaire Peter Sorellas gave us great filming tips which are the foundation of the editing techniques he'll be taking us through today. So if you want to learn how to create effects like these ones, Buckle up, because in this video, Peter will literally take us through it step by step. So for that reason, this video is probably going to be one of my longest ones. But what I'll do over the next few days is break it up into smaller videos, each dedicated to one effect or one technique from this video. It will be the same footage, but in a shorter form, so that it's a little bit less daunting and easier to consume for you guys. Anyway, I've wasted enough time already, so here's the man of the hour, Peter Sorellis. Hey, so now we are in the editing bay. I'm gonna show you guys a few simple tips and effects that I use when I'm actually editing basketball highlight videos for Instagram. So I'm gonna make a short Instagram reel today and in the process, I'm gonna show you a practical application of in-camera transitions. We're also going to go over speed ramping, the stabilization effect that you see oftentimes where people will stabilize around the ball or around a person. And we're gonna go over how I apply overlays to my videos. So let's get into the program. I've already pulled three clips here from the last basketball game that I filmed before the pandemic. So I got the threes there and I want to kind of find a way to cut them together seamlessly. So I'm going to pull one on to the start of the timeline here. I ideally want to start this at a position where there's some motion blur, like when the camera's whipping, something like that. So let's cut this maybe here. And then here the ball goes in. That's good and the camera whips away. So let's stop it there. Now let's grab the next clip I want, take this one. And let's find where I want this clip to start. There's like a camera whip from right to from left to right here. So I can probably get away with using that. Let's take that and put it here. Since that whip kind of aligns with the one from the previous clip. And we'll put those end to end. So now when you play this back, you kind of get this like whip effect. Maybe I take a couple frames off of that. Couple more. We'll finesse this later, but this is roughly what we're looking for. And let's play this clip through. Ball goes in, and then we kind of get like a little weird camera shake thing. Let's just stop it there. And we'll bring this clip on. And we have a little, let's see kind of a weird camera shake thing as we zoom in for the three, like this guy's out of focus and then he kind of comes into focus. So maybe right here, we'll start the clip. And he goes up and shoots. Then you whip the camera, so we'll cut that there. This should take a lot of like the whip pans and stuff that we did in the in-camera transitions and put them together. So when you play this through in a loop, it should look like all the clips kind of blend together a little more seamlessly than if you did hard cuts. So let me just see if this worked. All right, so not bad, but it can use some work. So I'm just gonna go in and tweak this a little bit. And one of the ways that we can adjust this to make everything more seamless is by speed ramping. This helps you just get through clips faster and it kind of creates a more seamless transition because things just happen really quickly and the audience doesn't have time to react to the fact that you're switching clips. So this transition here is kind of like jittery. I feel like this clip 204, the whip pan is a lot slower than 174. So let's go show clip keyframes, time remaining speed and we're going to speed ramp this. Hold command and click and that'll give you this little thing. You can drag it out and now whichever side you drag up is gonna get faster. So we're gonna drag this end up to make it faster. Let's go to like 160%. And that, that will make the whip there faster and this should help make it more seamless. 
Uh, maybe we just need to take some frames off of this. These in-camera transitions are very much about just like tweaking things. So you're not gonna get it the first time, you're gonna have to play with it. That wasn't terrible, that wasn't horrible. Maybe a couple more, maybe I'll take a couple frames off of this one and put them onto this one. Let's see how that looks. That's actually not horrible. Let's actually s s add some slow motion to this as well while we're at it. So I'll add another one of these, drag it out. I'll just pull this clip way off for a sec. And we're going to bring this down to 20% since I shot this in 120 frames per second and our timeline is 24 frames per second, as you can see right there. So we're gonna keep tweaking this till we get it to slow down to the point that we like. This is fine. Let's bring this back up to 100% and drag it out so that the clip goes from 20% to 100% over this duration. Now it goes in, so let's add a speed ramp here. We'll speed ramp into the next clip. And now I'm going to bring this clip back in and we'll see what that transition looks like. Still rough, we need to lose some frames on the end here. So let's take those off with W and unlink the audio for a second because we don't really need the audio right now. We'll deal with audio at the very end. And here we'll just speed ramp this so we have a little whip into this shot. So again, right click, show keyframes, time remaining speed and hold command, drag this out and now you can start speed ramping bring this up nice and fast. Let's see what that looks like. Not bad, but I still think 204 is running a bit long. So let's cut that short. There we go. Not horrible. Tighten that. Let's uh, tighten this up a little so that by the time we get to the guy actually shooting the ball, he's at regular speed. That's not bad. Now let's add some slow motion while the ball is in the air. And we will just speed ramp through this part so that we can get through the basket just sitting here faster. Cause there's a few seconds where like we're just sitting here and the basket's just there, which I'm not crazy about. So we'll just speed that part up. And that should be good. So after all that speed ramping, we have a clip that looks something like this. As I just noticed something, in this clip, we end by whipping from right to left, and then we start again by whipping from left to right. Let's change that. I'm gonna bring this clip out a little. And we have this moment here where we whip from left to right. Let's start this clip there. So that now when we play the end back, it'll actually loop perfectly with the start. So we have a whip from right to left, and, oh, nope, never mind. What do we need here? Do we need this? Let's see here, we have a whip from right to left, and then we start on a whip from right to left. That makes sense. Cool. This process does take a little bit of finessing. You need to play with it as you're seeing here. But I wanted to give you guys like an authentic picture of what this looks like. Though now we have a pretty seamless transition. I actually think this is a little bit too slow. We stay on this for too long, it's not that important, and I kind of want to keep this moving. Yeah, 
there it is. Took a little bit of tweaking, but I was able to use the in-camera transitions with speed ramping to get a clip that we kind of like. So now let's do an effect that is really popular online that I use all the time, which is stabilization. We're gonna stabilize some of these clips to the motion of the ball. Since we do have the ball in the frame for the duration of all these three point shots, we'll just pick one and we'll stabilize it so you can know how to stabilize the shot in After Effects for your edits. Clap the boom, I'm coming through. They wanna see what I'm about. Yeah, I got skills, do it for the thrill. I'm on a paper route. Extra, extra, read about it. I'm today's trying to tap it. I put commas over bullshit. Yeah, I put that on mamas. So just a note, if you're stabilizing something that you speed ramped, you have to nest the clip first. So I recommend before you stabilize a clip, hold option and drag it up to create a copy of it. And then right click, nest it, and you can just call it whatever you want. I don't know, it's called nested sequence one. And now you have a copy of this clip. So if you mess up your stabilization or you need to restart, you can just like delete this and you still have the original clip down at the bottom. But normally what you would then do is you right click and click replace with After Effects composition. I am going to stabilize this one here at the start. So I don't need to nest this since we didn't actually use any like speed properties on it. We only speed ramped these second two. So let's hold option and drag this up. Now we're going to right click and click replace with After Effects composition. This is going to bring us into Adobe After Effects where we're going to be stabilizing the ball for this shot. Okay, so here we are inside of Adobe After Effects and we have the one clip that we're going to stabilize all loaded up here. And now I'm quickly going to show you guys how we stabilize the ball. So let's go tracker, stabilize motion. This brings you into the layers panel and you have this little tracker point that lets you focus on the thing that you want to stabilize. So before we start this, we need to pick where we want to start stabilizing the motion of this shot and where we want to end stabilizing the motion of this shot. Um, so let's scroll through and find where we want to start stabilizing the ball. Ideally for this effect, you want the ball to stay in a pretty similar place place in the frame the entire time. So we don't want to start stabilizing like right here because the ball is way off to the side. And for most of the rest of the shot, the ball is in the middle of the frame. So maybe we can start stabilizing the shot right here. So let's add a marker there just so that we know that's where we're going to start. And we can end stabilizing right before it goes in. Here it gets like obstructed by the backboard. So maybe that's a good spot to stop stabilizing. Let's put a marker right here so we know that's where we're going to end. So let's go to where we're going to start stabilizing. We will zoom in a little bit and we're going to make this track point a little bigger. We're going to put the small square around the ball and the big square is going to be slightly larger than the ball. And here the small square represents the item that you're looking to stabilize and the big square is the area where After Effects is going to search in the next frame to find that item. So here I've said that the ball is what I'm stabilizing and in the next frame After Effects so to look in this part of my video to find the ball. So if you go one frame forward, you can see the ball is still within that square. So After Effects will find it and continue tracking it. And that's what you want. You need your outside square to be big enough to allow for that. So we're gonna start tracking forward one frame at a time here by just clicking this, the little arrow going forward with the, like, the line next to it. And we're going from the beginning towards the end. So we go one frame forward, After Effects is gonna take a second to track and it finds the ball. Now let's try tracking forward multiple frames at a time. This might be a little bit slower with a basketball. If you were tracking like a hockey puck or a golf ball or a ball that's like really small, it would be faster to track because After Effects just wouldn't need to analyze that much of the space to find where the item is since it's smaller. But a basketball might take a while, but still we'll try tracking forward a few frames and then I'll show you how to manually track as well. So we've tracked forward a few frames and our arrow turned into a square. So it's just gonna keep going until we hit this square and tell After Effects to stop, which we should do if it gets really off course, it starts to guess. You can see that it's going kind of slow. It's not like the best. So at this point you would normally like get up, go grab a coffee. All right, I'm gonna stop this now. Um, I think you guys kind of get the point. You can see that After Effects has automatically tracked forward the ball on this line and you can see a point for every single frame where After Effects has tracked the ball. You can use pay, the page up and page down keys or if you don't have those, you can hold command and then use the right and left arrow to go back and forth single frames. And then that's how you can kind of go through and see where the track point is relative to the ball in any given frame. 
and we can just go through and start dragging points to make manual adjustments. Ideally, we want these points to look like they're in a straight line. So when there's like a, a weird change in direction, like there is right here, where it's like going up and then it quickly starts going to the side, we can kind of even these points out to create more of a bezier, even if these points aren't exactly where the ball was at that specific point in time. We just want this motion to look smooth. So we want to adjust our points so that we have a smooth line because that's going to make the motion of the shot fluid once it's stabilized to the ball. So let's go back to our last frame here. We'll click U on the layer so you can see the clip keyframes. And you can actually see that the motion tracking data is being applied to this clip as we go through. So now we're just going to go to the next frame. So we hit page down or you hold command on the right butt and the right arrow. And then we can move this tracker around the ball. And we can just keep on doing this actually, where we keep the ball in the middle of the small square and go all the way through the shot. And we're gonna keep doing this until the ball gets to the second marker that we put, which is where the stabilization effect ends. All right, so our clip is finished tracking. We did a combination of manual and automatic tracking, and you can see the tracking points. When you do automatic tracking, you get a lot more tracking points, but manual, you get to put them where you want. So you need to decide on the method that works best for you. But regardless, we have our tracking finished and we now can follow the ball with our tracker through the entire shot. So let's click apply. We're going to apply this to X and Y. So just click OK. And this automatically applies it to the clip that's on your timeline. If you have more than one clip on your timeline, then just click this edit target button right here before you click apply. And then you can choose the clip that you want to apply the data to. But regardless, you can see when we play this clip through now, it follows the motion of the ball, which looks kind of cool, but we do have all these random blank spots on the side. So we're gonna be posting this on Instagram Reels. So first off, let's change our composition settings to 1080 by 1920. There we go. And now, we're, as you can see, we're gonna to have to rescale this clip so that it fits the dimensions. So we'll click P and then hold Shift and click S and that'll bring up your position and your scale keyframes. We're gonna scale this up to fill the frame and we'll move the position up. Let's center it so that our shooter here is in the middle of the frame like that and we're going to need to make this a lot bigger so let's make it nice and big and move it up a little so that we have room to compensate for when the tracker brings it down with this effect you usually need to scale your footage up quite a bit so if you can shoot in like 4k 120 because you have the Sony a7 III or something similar to that, then I highly recommend shooting at high resolutions. And this right here is actually a 1080 clip and like it's going to be fine, but just something to keep in mind. Now, ideally when you do this effect, you don't wanna to have to animate the position or the scale. You wanna just scale it up until it fits the frame and that's it. But oftentimes what ends up happening is you do need to animate the position to make everything fit within the frame without scaling the clip up too, too much. So I'm gonna go through here and animate the position of this clip so that we don't have any of these gaps like you can see here. So this clip is good until about here. Let's add a keyframe for the position of option P. And then at this point, the clip is pretty out of the frame. You can see that it starts to go further and further out of the frame and we have more of a blank spot. And then around this area, it kind of subsides and like this is the most that the clip leaves the frame. So we're gonna drag this up and then we'll keep scrubbing through our clip. At this point, it's too high, so we'll bring it down. At this point, it's pretty low, so we'll bring it up again. And then, whoop. and then here the ball goes into the basket. We'll click U so we can see where our tracking ends. It ends right here, so let's just move this down a little to cover that last little bit. And if we play this clip through now, it's a lot better. You can see there's still like little areas where the clip will come out of the frame. Like right here, there's like a tiny little space that the clip is out of the frame. And then similarly, I think there was one, yeah, there's one right here as well. And for these little ones, you don't really need to make position adjustments. What I usually do is I add the motion tile effect. And if you change the output width and output height to 200 and then click mirror edges, what it actually does is takes your 
clip flips it and then mirrors it over and over and over again. So I can actually just mirror this plain beige texture and then it will repeat and fill in that missing edge. So you can see that even on the bottom part here, I have this like yellow thing and then I turn motion tile on after doing that and it fills it in. It doesn't work the best here because there's a little black bar and you can see that it's clearly like a tile effect. But if you play this pretty quickly, there's no way anyone is going to notice that split second where there's like a little tile on the frame. And if you are worried about that, you can always animate the position keyframes to get rid of it. The last thing I want to do here is bring up my position keyframes. Let's hit Command A and we'll just drag and select them all. And we're going to easy ease them. So you can hit Function at F9. That'll automatically easy ease all of your clips. Or you can highlight them all like this and then right click and go Keyframe Assistant Easy Ease. And this just makes it so that all of your clips kind of like gradually have this smooth in and out versus just being completely linear and halting and going from one position to the next. And it makes your keyframes look a little bit more fluid and natural. So I like to do this, but now you can see we've got this ball stabilization effect completely done. I kind of want to add one more keyframe here to keep the ball in the frame on the make. Yeah, I like that. So to me, this clip is now fully stabilized and done. So I'm going to export. So first you can click Command S and just save. And if you go back to Premiere Pro, Dynamic Link will automatically put your clip here. So if we change our sequence settings to 1080 by 1920, you can actually see here once you render this out that the clip that we just made in After Effects is already in Premiere without you having to even export. Just like that. What I usually do for good measure is file, export, add to render queue, and I'm gonna export a full resolution version of this clip because sometimes dynamic link will break and I have had problems with it in the past. So every time I do a clip in After Effects, I like to render it and I keep it in a folder within my little project folders called renders. And then every clip that I've rendered out of After Effects is in there and I can drag it back in if I need it. I'm quickly going to navigate over to my renders folder. I'll click on it. There's our clip. So we can just take the renders folder and drag it right in. And now we have this clip fully rendered. I'm going to put it over top here and we can just disable this. And now this clip is in our Premiere Pro project. It is fully rendered. We're not going to have to re-render every time we add something over top like we would if we just kept dynamic link with the After Effects project. And that clip is done. So now if you want, you can do similar things to these other two clips here. I'm not gonna go through the process of stabilizing these another two times since I think you get it. I'm just gonna scale them up for the purpose of this tutorial. And I'm gonna show you how I apply overlays to my clips. So I'm scaling these up to 178 scale. That makes them fill the frame. And just make sure that everything looks good. And not really. All right, so I'm just gonna reposition these clips so that everything is lined up and they look the way that I want them to. So let's just move this over a little bit so that we can see the shooter in his initial shot and we can see the ball when it goes in, which we can. Maybe I'll just add one position keyframe at the start of this clip. And then at the end, I'll add another one so that the ball is in the frame. Let's drag this here a little. Yeah, that's pretty good for me. And then for this clip, let's do something similar. Let's add position keyframe there. We'll put the ball in the middle of the frame. Here we want to do it again. Put the ball in the frame and you can see the make. So here, Premiere isn't recognizing all of my position keyframes that I just added because I've done speed ramping on the clip. And sometimes Premiere will do this where there's like a bug where when you speed ramp a clip and then you try to add position keyframes, it just like doesn't see some of them, which is really annoying. So what you have to do to get rid of this is just remove all your keyframes and drag the clip up, scale it down so that all of the data in the clip is in the shot. We'll just disable the one underneath so you can see. So here the entire clip is in the shot and then you have to nest it and then scale it back up and now add your position keyframes. 
This is wildly annoying and it just kind of happens sporadically. I really wish Premiere would fix this, but that's your workaround in case your position keyframes just aren't picking up. So now we're just gonna go add the position keyframes that we want to this clip. Let's see, cut a couple frames off here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that works. Now we've got all of these clips keyframes so that they stay within the frames. We've stabilized, we've speed ramped, we've done our in-camera transitions. All that we have left to do now is add our overlays. I'm not gonna go over color grading in this tutorial, by the way, because that would just be way too much for all of this. I've already given you so much information. I know this tutorial is running super long, so if you want to do a color grading tutorial, maybe I'll do it in the future. Maybe you can check it out on East channel. I'm sure Beyond the Game TV is gonna drop a color grading tutorial soon for this type of stuff. But I can always come on and do another part if that's something that we want to do. But for now, let's go and look at our effects and overlays. So I've dragged in some of my favorite overlays here. And what I normally do when I'm starting the overlay process is I grab one overlay that looks something like this, where it just kind of lightly changes colors. And I'm gonna add this over the entire clip just so that I have like a color changing and exposure changing effect that I don't really need to animate much. So if that doesn't make sense, I'll show you what I mean right now. Let's take this clip, I'll drag it over my entire sequence. We'll scale it up so that it all fits. And let's cut it off at the end here. I'm gonna change the blend mode here to linear dodge add. I usually use additive blending modes like screen or linear dodge add when I'm adding overlays. I find that this works best and gives me the most appealing result. And obviously we don't want to play this back so intense you can barely even see what's happening because this clip is just like so, so full of noise. So let's turn the opacity here down to like 8% maybe. And now when you play the free, you can just see there's like a little film flicker over top of the entire thing. And it's like slightly changing colors, but it's not too noticeable. And I really like that. I usually use an overlay in this type of way on every single one of my videos. Let's actually shorten this up. And again, just like how we had to do a lot of tweaking when we were doing the in-camera transitions, you need to do a lot of tweaking when you're adding overlays, a lot of it is just like adding an overlay and then not being happy with it and then adding a different overlay. So it's really a bit of a tedious process, but it is worth it and you just kind of have to stick with it. Let's add some more video tracks. Let's just add five video tracks. There we go. And now let's scroll through this and see where else we can add an overlay maybe on this transition here to kind of distract from the fact that we're holding on the basket and you're seeing like nothing for a few seconds here, we can add like some sort of clutter or like transition overlay. So let's go into this film clutter folder and we'll just see what we have here. I'm not sure what all these are. I usually just click on a whole bunch of them and see which ones I like. But right now I'm looking for something that's gonna wipe over the frame and distract you from the fact that you're looking at this random frame of empty for a few seconds. That's not bad. Let's try that. So we'll bring that in, we'll go over here. Let's rotate it 90 degrees so it's the same orientation as our composition and we'll scale it up to fill, change the blending mode to linear dodge add, and let's see what this looks like. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Maybe because it ends on white, we can actually take it, reverse it. And now we have two frames of white here and then it comes off. So let's put this middle part where the transition of the two clips happens. And then we have that little flash transition there. That's kind of nice, I like that. We still need an overlay to kind of fill this part of the frame where you're just looking at nothing. That's not bad. They kind of blend in with the first overlay we used actually. So I kind of like that. We'll do the same thing we did for the other clip. Scale her up and linear dodge add. I was going to disable these two overlays for a second because I want to see where the white parts are on this and cut some of them out because they seem unnecessarily long to me. 
Yeah, that kind of works. So let's do that. We wanted to start this. The ball's in there. You, and as of right here, you can't really see anything. So we'll put those overlays there and then we'll turn on our little transition overlay that we made. That's pretty good. So I'd use these overlays to create like a little distraction during this kind of unsatisfying part of the video. So you see the ball go in, it happens, and then you get overlays to distract you into the next part. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll also place overlays on areas of emphasis. So here I've got the ball in slow motion. So maybe I can place an overlay while that is happening to show that like you're focusing on the ball since it's kind of like creating anticipation with the ball being in the air and slow motion. So let's grab, I'm sure that I have like a film burn or something in here that I can use. Yeah, sure, 16 millimeter burn transition. Let's just use this for the sake of time since I know this tutorial is crazy, crazy long right now. So the slow motion starts here and then it comes off. So let's uncheck uniform scale. And we're gonna rescale this so that it fits the dimensions of our composition, just like that. Let's change to linear dodge add. And now when we play this through, we get that. Can't say I was in love with that. We're gonna need to tweak this a little. What does overlay look like? I think it's kind of light. It's a hard light does. Oh, it's a little. I didn't like this black flash at the start. That was weird. Let's get rid of that. Maybe we're gonna keep this on overlay. Yeah, that wasn't bad. So I'm actually gonna use the ripple trim tool and this, uh, this drags your clips shorter or longer without actually changing the frames that's in it. It just makes everything either slower or faster. And we're gonna drag this out to just take a little bit longer time since the slow motion kind of starts here and ends over here and it doesn't cover the entire thing right now. So let's do that. I like that and I just don't want it to kind of suddenly come in and come out. I want there to be something that kind of Pop, pops and covers the frame when it comes in and then pops and covers the frame when it comes out so that it looks more seamless when this transition comes on. So let's take our old damaged film with light leaks, like the one that we used to create this the random color changes and let's find a part where it makes a quick change in color like that. We're gonna drag that over the top part here. Let's actually make it the proper orientation and we'll scale it down. There we go, that's perfect. I will change this to linear dodge add, but this time I'm actually gonna leave the opacity at 100. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna keyframe it up and down, kind of like how we did for speed ramping. So we're gonna change the opacity here both ways. And then I'm gonna hold, hold command or control, depending on if you're on Mac or PC, add some keyframes. And now it's gonna kind of come on, create like a flash and then this comes on. And then we'll option drag this to duplicate it, put it in the middle of the end of our little transition overlay and then command r minus 100 to reverse it and now we're going to get the same effect in reverse to bring our little overlay off and now when you play this through you get a flash this overlay comes on and it flashes off and you get that little that little shot going in now we have one more place right here where we can add a little bit of a transition because that's kind of jarring. So let's grab this film burn here. It's just this one. And this is just a little burn that comes across the screen and then goes away. So we're gonna take this and mark the start and end points. This is kind of the start here, then the burn goes. And by this point it's over. So we'll click O, drag this onto our timeline. Obviously this is far, far, far too long. So let's change the orientation so that it fills our screen. There we go. And now we're gonna use the ripple trim tool. I hope I'm calling it the right name. The rate stretch tool, apologies. We'll use the rate stretch tool to make this much faster so that the part that's fully white, which is right here, is over top of the transition of these two clips. Put that right there. 
And then we're gonna mess with the blending mode again. Let's go linear dodge add. And that kind of looks like that. I think there's like too many frames of white in the middle. So I'm actually just gonna add a cut here. Let's go to this frame of white and add another cut. And we'll make those meet at the middle. And now you get this little flash transition and you're into the next clip. And then it wipes and goes back to the start. Maybe let's add a couple more frames onto this. Maybe take one off. As you can see, this is a process of tweaking. Like you need to just tweak stuff over and over and over and really take your time with this effect to get it to a place you like. But fortunately, I think I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm gonna do some sound design and some color grading, not in this tutorial, but I'm just gonna do it to finish this clip off since this tutorial is too long for me to go through that entire process. And then you can see the finished product of our hard work here editing. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this little editing session here. I hope you can take some of the effects and the tips that you learned from watching me do this and apply them to your work when you're creating basketball highlight videos for Instagram. I don't know where in the video this is gonna go, so if this is the end of the video, then thank you so much for sticking through this. And if it's not the end of the video, then enjoy the rest of it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, clap the boom, I'm coming through. They wanna see what I'm about. Yeah, I got skills, do it for the thrill. I'm on a paper route. Extra, extra, read about it. I'm today's trying to tap it. I put commas over bullshit. Yeah, I put that on mamas. Okay, so first of all, a huge thank you to Peter for bringing so much value to my channel. I've told you this in private already, but I am extremely grateful for all the time you spent on this and how helpful and valuable all this information is, not only for my viewers, but honestly, for me as well. And to the rest of you, thank you so much for being so passionate about sports videography, because let's be honest, if you're still watching this video at this point, it means you're very curious about it, you're very serious about improving your skills, which is great for your sports videography career, great for the sports videography community, and great for the industry at large. So on that note, keep practicing, keep learning, and keep watching. <laughs> Anyway, my name is Ich, and once again, I hope I earned the privilege of your time.